We're going down there. Yeah, can you see it? Neither can we. This is fascinating. We probably have zero footage, but we're giving it a go. Oh, check it out. We are here. Oh my gosh, can you believe we are actually in Newfoundland or The Rock, as everyone's been calling it in Nova Scotia. No, I cannot believe it yet. It feels great out here though. Oh, it does feel fabulous. And Hopefully the, it stays this way as the, much as possible. The views are epic right now. I know, we haven't even we're gone. at a rest stop. We've only gone three yeah. kilometers, <laughs> literally. And so, look, look at that view. Oh my goodness. We're trying to figure out our parking situation right now. So there's quite a few people that dipped in here in this rest area, but we think a lot of them are just doing a pup break because they were on a ferry with their dogs cooped up so yeah. they're letting them walk and, and do their and thing. maybe doing their own thing too so i don't know so we'll see how many stay overnight it looks like some of them are already starting up and leaving our plan is to stay here for the night yeah there's one already going so i bet a lot of them aren't staying so if we want to move things around we can but um tonight we're going to basically figure out where we're going tomorrow we need a picture in front of that sign yes we do picture opportunity back there the best place to stop is always at the welcome center of course there's a wealth of knowledge there so i am peeking through some of the books to see if i want to pick up some for our trip hi these are going to be color coordinated so you're right now you're in western okay and then central eastern avalon and labrador is going to start in port of Basque. And it's going to travel with you as you go across. So okay. Watch your map and okay. it can actually work with you. All right. Awesome. And how much are these? Oh, awesome. Thank like you so much. Candy. Oh, perfect. Did you say candy? Yes. <laughs> She's speaking my love language. <laughs> All right. Oh, this must be banana. Yep, that one's banana. The red one's molasses. Molasses. And the white ones are either peanut butter or rubber butter. Oh, I see yeah. something better. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. We have moved locations. Hopefully this won't be a problem for the rest of the night. You can see there's a little space in front of us. We always worry that somebody will pull in and park there and block us. It's not level as you can see, so it's not ideal, but we can still open the back slide here on the curb, even though it's not level, that will allow us to get to our clothes and do everything we wanna do. Our light check is complete, which means we can head out of this welcome center where we spent last night with a slight lean on the RV and go somewhere flat. Yeah, I don't know how much fresh water we lost last night, but it was dripping out of our overflow. So Hopefully we can set up our Starlink and actually have Wi-Fi because yeah. we've been mooching off the welcome center all night. Yeah, we weren't the only ones here last night. There was, uh, I think, two others, two other RVers that were parked here. Um, and they've already left. Of course, we're last because coffee is so good in the morning when you're sitting. Um, so it's time to move. So let's hit it. The good thing about Newfoundland is you can pretty much, if there's a spot to pull over and park, you can park there overnight. Unless it's posted, it's allowed almost everywhere. So we'll see how many of those opportunities we find. Yeah, that's what the locals say. So we're going to have to trust but verify that. So, so far, day one, we didn't get a knock on the door at midnight. <laughs> so we're good. We're going down there. Yeah, can you see it? Neither can we. <laughs> Looking now, the morning air is waiting for us now. Call into the space between the clouds There's something beautiful in the quiet we have found Something beautiful We will go as far as our feet can take us
Welcome to the first video in our Newfoundland series. If you missed our ferry ride over to Newfoundland, we'll link that down below and in the video. All right, let's provide a little context for yep. those of you not familiar with Newfoundland. We were dropped off by the ferry in Port of Basque and we drove 250 miles to Portland Creek to where we were staying at our campground. And I gotta tell you, we highly recommend you visiting. It is one of the most beautiful national parks you're ever gonna see. It was totally amazing. Yep. And some of the things you'll see while you're there is the fjord, which equals Norway's fjords. You're gonna see mountains that tower over beaches and bogs and it is a wonder to the eyes. It is. Fun fact about Gross Moor National Park, it's, it is a UNESCO heritage site because of the tablelands. And there are only five places in the world where you can see tablelands, which of course was once a core of the earth. If you're interested in that, head over to our accompanying blog because I have a list and links there for you. Also, if you are planning <laughs> a trip to Newfoundland yourself, we are putting together the ultimate travel guide for you with all the tips and tricks you're going to need to know for a wonderful vacation. Some of which we missed out on because we weren't aware of at the time. If you're interested in this awesome travel guide, make sure you join our newsletter so you will get notified as soon as it's released. The million dollar question, how long should you stay in Grossmore National Park? Well, it's tough because we didn't stay there long enough. We were only there for three days. We didn't account for bad weather and we wanted to do a ton of hikes. So if you're interested in those types of activities, make sure you give yourself at least a minimum of three days. Add in a couple weather days. Keep watching because we're going to tell you the best place to stay while you're visiting the national park because where we stayed definitely was not ideal. <laughs> These barren orange and red mountains are called tablelands. And the reason they're called that is because they were formed from the Earth's mantle. So these mountains at one time were in the center of the Earth. That's crazy. They were formed 400 million years ago when two continents collided. Who was around 400 million years ago to, to um, say that's what happened? Definitely not us, <laughs> but yeah. they discovered it based on the specific rock. Some people call it the Earth's soul because mm. they were formed from the center of the Earth. And if you look around, I know it's hard to tell in our videos because, <laughs> you know, summer storm blew in, but there is a line where the growth ends. And that is where, here comes the rain. Yeah. And that is where the actual tablelands begin. There are very few places on earth to walk the earth's mantle. So we are some of the very few people that can say they walked on the center of the earth. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So it's pretty exciting. It's one of those hikes that you have to do because you may never get to see the Earth's mantle again. Yeah, so the Tablelands hike is about four kilometers out and back. It'll take you about an hour if you mosey. And we just passed a gentleman who said it's hard not to stop and take pictures. And we completely agree. The views here everywhere in Grossmore are totally epic. Full speed, we follow our feet and discover a bit of gold at the end of the rainbow ooh, ooh, ooh. We never know what it holds We'll spin waiting around the corner We never know what it holds Chasing the unknown Wherever it may take us Wherever it may lead Chasing the unknown And just like that, the rain showed up. We almost made it back. Yeah, with a vengeance, it's coming down. I don't know if you can see the sheet. Let me put it on this side. You can see it up there. I doubt GoPro can pick that yeah. up. Especially yeah. with drops on the lens. Yeah, we're, we probably have zero footage, but we're giving it a go. You'd have asked me five years ago if I'd have been one in Newfoundland and two walking the, the, the Earth's mantle. The Earth's soul. I would have told you no. I would have never guessed that our RVing adventures would have brought us here, that's for sure. Do you remember our opening video where we talked about does the RV float? Travel the world? That ain't happening. Dude, start from the Does the RV float? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> here well, we go. We went over the ocean, even yeah. though it was on a ferry. Yeah, obviously Ruby. Obviously, the RV can float. Ruby fit on the ferry just nice. It was kind of weird seeing her on there, um, but it was, it was pretty cool. But 
that being said, you don't have to have an RV to get here. There were a ton of people that were coming over here in their car yes. um, to hang out or for a couple weeks. There are several airports here, so you can fly into St. Yeah. John's or one of the smaller airports, which a lot of people do. This is fascinating. We are walking among the pieces of a ship that went down in the water December 11th, 1919 in a storm. It was a steam and sail ship and it had passengers, including an infant, and thankfully they were all saved. But you can see pieces of this ship everywhere, including there are still wood pieces this in looks, the midst of all this metal. This piece right here looks like it was on the bow of the ship in the forecastle. This would be where the anchor chain was sitting. You could see some type of windlass. It's definitely a winch of some sort. It's got two gypsy heads on either side. This is 104 years old. Well, that's when it went down. Yeah, well, that's when it went down. The technology they had back then, I mean, look at this. Oh my gosh, it, it's crazy. And while you're looking at the ship, please look at the rocks and how smooth they are just from the water. But look at the frame. I mean, they're still part of the hull. And there's another screw over there for something. A screw? Oh Our, yeah, it's a, a gear. Oh my gosh, look. This is all pieces of the ship on the ocean floor with, with all the sea plants. It's a hatch of some sort. Had to be. You could see all the rivets where they had riveted all the metal to the ship. The holes filled with rocks now. This was another piece of machinery that looks like it had something to do with either rope, lines, could be pulling things up onto the ship. Look at the plate in the water. The sea has definitely not been kind to it. Well, for a hundred years, I think it's been pretty nice. <laughs> you would think the salt water would really rust and erode it faster than what it is. Yeah. This is definitely a bulkhead of some sort. That there looks like it was part of the engine. Now this is incredible to find this as old as it is to see it still laying here on the beach. This little piece is so heavy. Like this, I guess, it, what is it, iron? It's got to be. be. I mean, it is. You'd be surprised how heavy this thin little piece is, but I guess that's why it survived as long as it has. It was solid. Yeah. It's it's nuts to see it all just strewn on the beach. Yeah. That looks like mooring bits that would have been on the forecastle of the ship is where they tied the mooring lines in a figure eight around them to hold the ship to the pier. That piece there still has screws sticking out of it with threads. You can see the threads on that. That's that's incredible. When you get to Grossborn National Park, we recommend you stay in the park, of course. They have campgrounds, cabins, all kind of places to stay, whether you have an RV or you flew over. But of course, when we were there, we couldn't get in because we were last minute. So if you also can't get in, we recommend you stay in the towns of Wiltondale through Deer Lake. So that will set you up for the least amount of driving so you can see as many of the best sites of Grossmorn while you're there. That's because Grossmorn National Park has 697 square miles of beauty to explore. So you want to keep that driving to a minimal. We've been staying here at Mountain Waters Campground for the last couple of days. And you can see it's a nice little tucked in campsite. And it hasn't been too bad other than a couple things. One. The bugs are out of control here, and I don't know if that's a normal thing for the summer or just this summer because it's abnormally warm for them, but it's insane. The other thing is the water. Our water spigot was actually broken, so we had to jump off the water spigot next to us. We did manage to make it work. We finally had a great signal from our Starlink. Connectivity has been outstanding. Today, we are heading out. We're headed, oof, sorry, dive bomb. We're headed towards St. John's. 